Good morning, stars. Mr. Kraft here. I am going to be your writing teacher this week. I want to say a couple things before we get going on this lesson. First of all, this set of lessons is going to be for everybody, kindergartners through sixth grade. There's going to be times where I speak a little more to our younger students with some advice and, and reviewing of some writing skills, and there's going to be times I speak a little more to our older students. I want everyone to do their best to understand when we're on those parts and make sure you participate in everything because the lesson is designed so that we all accomplish a good piece of writing this week. Number two, you're going to need a paper and a pencil to participate. So if you don't have that, go get it now. It doesn't have to be a special pencil. It can be a pen. It doesn't have to be a special notebook or paper. You might not even have school supplies in your house. I just need you to have something to write on that you're going to use all week long. Finally, this is not just one lesson. This is one of four lessons, but it's one assignment that's going to go through four lessons. So with that, let's go ahead and begin. I usually start writing lessons with some kind of warm up where we look at a piece of writing that has mistakes in it and we try and make corrections. So I want you to take a look at something. This is a short piece of writing that has some mistakes in it. It says, I miss my teacher, she misses me too. Your challenge, boys and girls, right now, you don't need to rewrite the sentence, just look at it, try and find any mistakes in it. And I mean editing mistakes, like capital letters or punctuation, like periods. Take a look right now, I'm gonna give you a couple seconds, and then we'll see if you got them. All right, let's see how you did. When we look at this piece of writing, I miss my teacher, she misses me too. There are a couple mistakes in here. First, right at the very beginning, I. Boys and girls, I hope you know that when we mean the word I, it is a capital I. I miss my teacher. I see this mistake a lot in kindergarten and first graders in their writing. We gotta overcome that. The word I is always a capital I. I miss my teacher, she misses me too. I hope you heard a little pause here because that little pause means we should have had a period there. This doesn't just keep going, this is actually two sentences. I miss my teacher, period, she misses me too. And our final correction, if we separated the sentences, this is a period, that means this is a new sentence, so capital S. I miss my teacher, she misses me too. Oh my gosh, another period. Those are the mistakes there. I wonder how many you noticed before I checked. All right, now for you older kids, I hope that was easy. I hope you got them all because that was a tune-up for you to do something a bit more difficult. Zoom in on this piece of writing. This is for the older kids, but if you're a younger kid, maybe you'll catch some of these. It says, I remember Coates. It's that awesome school that I love, even though I don't always admit it. It's crazy that I haven't been there in two weeks. All right, stars. There's definitely some mistakes in there. There's capitalization mistakes. There's punctuation mistakes. There's even a spelling mistake in there, at least one. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds. You don't need to write the sentence but see if you can catch some of those mistakes. And if you're watching with your parents, tell them the mistake. Go ahead. See if you can catch at least one more mistake in the next 10 seconds before I check. Now, let me take us through where the errors were. Now, if you were really into this, but I just didn't give you enough time to capture all the mistakes, you can pause this video right now and buy yourself some time and then unpause it when you're ready because I'm checking it right now. I hope you caught most of these, if not all of them. I remember Coates, period. 
It's that, wait a minute, capital I. That's the beginning of the sentence, right? I remember Coates. It's that awesome school. Something doesn't look right about awesome. I think it's spelled wrong. Here is an easy way to check. Siri, how do you spell, I'm here. How do you spell the word awesome? Awesome. A-W-E-S-O-M-E. -E. I missed that E in there. Siri even spelled it for me. So, you know, you can use devices like that and parents, that's fine. So we have the correct spelling of awesome now. It's that awesome school that I, oh my gosh, capital, love, even though I, a oh, rookie mistake, don't always admit it. Don't. That's a contraction, right? Do not. We got to have the apostrophe. Even though I don't always admit it, it's crazy that I haven't been there in two weeks. Wait, something's wrong here. I remember Coates. Sometimes when you're editing, you sometimes got to start at the top just to figure it out. I remember Coates, new sentence. It's that awesome school that I love, comma, that's the beginning of a phrase, even though I don't always admit it, period. New sentence. It's crazy that I haven't been there in two weeks. There's one more mistake in here. Two, we mean two weeks, two weeks. So that is actually T-W-O. Take a good look at that, boys and girls, because there's a lot of errors in there. I hope you caught at least a few of them. And that concludes our warm-up. All right, good. Now, let's get into our actual lesson for this week. Warm-up complete. You know, you got to do those warm-ups because when you start your writing, your own writing, you're probably going to make some of those mistakes too. And we've got to get into the habit of checking them. Here's what we're up to. The assignment starts today, goes through Friday, is if we could zoom up on this. Your writing assignment is going to start with this phrase. Right about now, I'm really missing, and my rule is it has to be something about coats or it has to be about someone at coats. Right about now, I'm really missing. It could be your teacher. It could be a specials teacher. It could be a friend. It could be something that's not a person, just something cool. It could be your stuff. It could be your desk. Something about school that you're missing right about now. That's the assignment. Now, before we settle into that, we got to talk about our process. And I want you to take a look here. If we zoom in on that, writers always have a process. And I bet your teachers have talked about this. They probably told you some version of what I'm going to tell you, which is to say that when writers write, their story, their piece of writing just doesn't magically appear, right? It always starts with a plan. Then they draft, which means they start actually writing the story, but it's not really perfect the first time. It's actually, it's super messed up when they draft. Sometimes we even call it a first draft. And during and after the drafting, they revise and edit. Revise is when you change the language, maybe add some stuff. Edit is when you do things like catch your mistakes, like your periods, your misspellings, kind of like what we did in our warm-up. They do both those things. And I don't know if you can see it on my diagram, but there's actually these white arrows showing that there's actually a cycle going back and forth between drafting and revising and editing. Basically, writing is like that. It's so complicated that you got to keep checking on it and keep changing it until you finally get out of draft to a final copy. So, that's going to be our process. Today is really about the plan and the beginning of the draft, the first draft. So, let's review our topic. Right about now, I'm really missing. And let's think about that for a minute. I am going to start my planning right now. So, I have my paper. Right about now, I'm really missing, you know, on this paper, I'm not trying to draft and write it like in paragraphs and all that yet. I just want to spill out and dump out all my thoughts and really get my topic together. I'm really missing 
all the kids. I'm really missing my high fives at this missile. I hope you missed that. That was always one of the best parts of my day. I'm missing hugs at arrival. I'm missing, my gosh, kids smiling. I'm missing kids visiting their old teachers. Sometimes, boys and girls, you may remember this. You may remember this. We we have so many kids who visit their old teachers and want to hug them and talk to them at dismissal. We have kids who are late for the bus every week. You may remember I made a rule at arrival. So many kids were late for class. I told them they weren't allowed to uh, visit their old teachers for a while. You remember that? Kind of miss that now. All right, come on back to my plan. I want to show you a couple things. Now, this does not look like paragraphs. It's just a bunch of ideas I spilled out. Some people, when they plan, they might have like their idea in the center and they might spoke out ideas like a web and write ideas. Some people actually draw a lot of pictures of what they, what they um, are planning to do. It's just a place to dump all my ideas before I get to the actual writing. Now, I wanna be clear, most of these ideas on here, they're gonna make it into my actual story. Okay, they're gonna make it into my actual story. But right now I just wanna dump them out. And that is what I want you to do right now. I want you to think about our topic. I want you to get one piece of paper, something to write with, and I want you to start putting your ideas down. Right about now, I'm really missing something about coats. You decide. I'm gonna be quiet for a couple minutes and I want you to start that plan. Don't worry about spelling words correctly when you're planning. You just want to spill out your ideas. Don't get caught up in that. Combination of drawings and doodles with written ideas is fine. A list is fine. Everybody plans differently. Keep spilling your ideas out. I want to give you 30 more seconds, and I want you to dump as many ideas as you can onto your paper for your plan. All right, stars, so we have a plan, but you might not be 100% complete with your plan, but you need to be pretty far. I hate going into writing classes where kids spend the entire writing workshop planning. At some point, you've got enough on the paper that it triggers you to move from plan 
to draft. Remember earlier I said the draft is when you're actually writing it like a story, like an essay, kind of in paragraphs? But the first draft is awfully messy. It's not going to have uh, everything spelled right. You might not even catch all the periods. And you're going to have better ideas after you draft a little bit that you're going to fill in later. So, right now, I'm going to bring the video to an end, but here's what you're going to do. You're not done. You are not done just because the video is ending. It's just like when you're in writing workshop. Your teacher pulls everybody together and does a writing lesson, and then you go off to your desk. And that's when you do the actual writing, right? In fact, that's most of writing workshop, you writing. Only a little bit's the teacher teaching everybody. And that's what's about to happen now. I'm going to end. I want you to finish your plan. And I want you to get into the beginning of your first draft. You don't have to complete it today. You just have to get into the beginning of it and get some things laid out. You must start your first draft with the words, right about now, I'm really missing. Finish up that sentence and then keep going use your plan. For tomorrow's lesson, I expect that you will have your plan and what you have written for your draft, however far you have gotten. Now, parents, if you're watching, you might be wondering how long you want to keep your kids writing. Now, now it's as long as you can afford, and if a kid is really into it, don't stop them. Also, I wouldn't help them every step of the way and stop their momentum of their ideas coming out. You can help them edit once they produce a lot. But to the original question, how long do we write for? Well, if you're a kindergartner, first grader, 10 minutes, maybe 15. Middle grades, 15 to 20, we kind of build ourselves up. The older students are accustomed in writing workshop for writing for about 40 minutes at a stretch. That's pretty typical. So we should do all this. But bear in mind, we're going through a process all week long. What you produce today doesn't mean you're done. It just means tomorrow I'm going to teach another lesson and we're going to figure out how to make that draft even better. All right, that is it for me. Remember um, what to do. Remember all your skills. I'm looking forward to seeing what you produce tomorrow, and I will see you again at 930.